Four games of playoff baseball in the books yesterday. Four games won, four games lost. Let's talk all about them. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Baseball. It's a show. We talk baseball on it. We like baseball. We post these on YouTube. We post them on all the podcast apps. We appreciate everyone that's gotten on board, is hanging out with us each day to recap the games that were. Today's a doozy because there's four games yesterday, Jake. The most amount of games that can be played in the MLB playoffs were played. And because of the outcome of the NLDS games, there will be four games again guaranteed on Monday. So we are in the thick of the playoffs right now. The most action that can be happening is happening this weekend in early October. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. I've got my co-host Jake. He is in Denver, and this episode of Talking Baseball is proudly sponsored by Adam. You have to make, you said when they only have one name, they're baseball players, so I think people are leaving one name to find out what baseball player they are. Are you going Duvall? That's most obviously Adam Duvall. Okay, I thought it was too, to be honest. Yeah. I'm glad we're starting the show with honesty. Alex Emmett. Alex Emmett, yep. Nick Sanders. It's Nick coming Sanderson. close. Yeah, coming close to my fake enemy, Nick Sanderson. Yeah, and this is just Nick Sanders. Co, you got a baseball player, the first name Co. So that's that's a player's initials. I'm gonna have to dive into that during the show and see what I can find. Um, okay, but yeah, that's a that's someone with the initials Sio. S-I-O. Stephen Ickles O'Brien. So you just took your last name. Yeah. One of the most generic S names. Yeah. And then you said Ickles in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's his middle name, I think. Okay. It's a chance. And AJ. AJ. Ooh, see, that might be an issue for you. It's not AJ Pollock. Um, he's already a friend of the program. He's probably. I thought already... I was going to Barnett. Uh, no, for you, this is bad news. It's AJ Cole. Why is that bad news for me? Because you were so hard on him at the end of his Yankee career. Oh, I forgot his first name was AJ. Well, there you go. That's the biggest <laughs> misconnect that just happened there. <laughs> Cole World. Cole World. Can't get enough. Whew. All right. Well, those are our most recent Patreon supporters and subscribers. They get to listen live as we record this, as well as some other perks along the way. Jake, how are you doing on this fine Saturday morning? I'm doing well. I just had a, a funny realization uh, that's kind of a classic rude AL to NL take, but I'm glad the American League will be taken off tomorrow so I can watch some of the NFL games um, and dip my toe elsewhere. Because I think my eyes are starting to go baseball blind. I, I messaged you during last night's game. Uh, there was a while that I had to watch the Yankees game in the reflection of my windows because my eyes were hurting so much from watching the TV. Yeah. Um, the, the baseball was bleeding out of my eyes. But then it was just my TV. I started watching on my computer for a bit, and I was fine. So that's, a, that's weird. If we've got any eye TV doctors, um, don't, be, don't be shy to reach out. Um, but I'm doing great, man. I, uh, I needed some rest. I got, I think I, I, I got like six hours, but they were a hard six. I was out, um, the hard six year old college nickname. So I'm, I'm doing good. I'm ready for, ready for Saturday. Like a six out of 10. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Like, a, like, like they saw me and they're like, that guy's a hard six out of 10. Y- yeah. Is that is that what you meant? Because that's awesome. No, I was talking about your winky. Six inches. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out the insult. Either way is a huge compliment. To you. <laughs> yeah, it was never an insult. Okay, great. This is fantastic. 
Yeah, have a good, have a happy Saturday, man. How are you doing? The weather is really nice. Other, I'm really tired, uh, dude. Four game. I did a. Did I already say this? I did. A, I said it yesterday. I did a little behind the scenes. Maybe I'll get it edited today. Long day. We were, we were doing talking Yanks. I accidentally uploaded talking Yanks to the talking baseball feed. So if anyone got that, like they woke up and saw it and listened to it, and then they're like, "What the fuck is this?" Now I got to listen to their talking Yanks garbage. I'm not into that because we're such homers on that show. What or, is this or just communist shit. Much more than than uh, th- than here, I guess. We did we these kinda... guys create a whole baseball podcast just to reel us in and then <laughs> make us Yankees fans. Yeah, so I saw. I apologize about that. I posted on the wrong feed. I caught it. I caught it fairly quick, but changed it anyway. I'm really tired. Uh, four games is a lot, dude. You know, how, like during the regular season on this show, we'd be like, "Hey, it's impossible to watch every game." It's not impossible to watch every game, but it's I like I watched the Astros Rays game, Jake. Yeah. I had to remind myself about it. I had to go look at the box score. It's like what happened? I watched the whole thing. So that's kind of where I'm at. A little, little hazy. Being a spectator for one of these teams, I forgot. I was tweeting the wild card games willy nilly. No care right. for anyone's emotions. Just having a fucking blast as the third party bystander. Then the first games of the NLDS doing the same thing, covering them on Twitter, tweeting out every every gif I liked, having a blast. And then the Yankees game comes and every fucking pitch is a marathon. And I'm just so in the mouse trap of like playoff baseball. I forgot. I forgot when you have a team in there. Like I was alive on Periscope for, like, at-bats in the third inning as if they were bottom nine. That's how playoff baseball is when you're in it, though. It's really fun. It's taxing. I'm taxed. It's, uh, it's, it's a little daunting. And it's, again, we're only going to have one, one more four-game slate, so I'm going to appreciate it. Um, it was... I mean, in in Mountain Time Zone, I went. I mean, noon to midnight with baseball. Uh, pretty pretty insane, but I'll uh, I'll, I'll take that more often than not. We uh, we are not the guys that's gonna <laughs> complain about the length of the game. I know uh, there there was a little bit of that on a couple of the broadcasts last night, but don't care. Good baseball is good baseball. I think all the games yesterday were good games. We'll get into them. You have Burns. Uh, the Rays and and Houston is the only one that I think wasn't like. Actually, okay, the Yankees and the Twins at the end for for non Yankees fans. Yeah, both both those games, the wheels came off at the end. Um, where I think uh, the other ones kind of rode it out. But I mean, the it, Tampa Houston was a great game through five and should have been a better game with you wanna, outside you that pop burn up. It? But let's go. Yeah, here we go. Jakey Burns, game two, game one, ALDS. On your mark, get set, burn. Game one, Tampa, Houston, the final level boss, Justin Verlander and his Houston Astros hosted the Tampa Rays, hoping they wouldn't be made of glass now as Tyler takes the mound for them. A couple power righties. Insert your own Republican joke. I don't care. Like your ugly friend in college were scoreless through four until Jose Altuve, Jose Altuve, two run shot into the Crawford boxes. Glass now would work out of it. Oh, no, Brandon Lowe. Two runs would score on a miss pop-up. Yikes. And you can't do that against Houston. And you especially can't do that against Justin Verlander. Seven innings pitch, one hit, eight Ks. Why you mad, Tampa? As the who, what, where, when, and whys of Yarden and Yuli both hit RBI doubles. The Rays push a couple across late off of Ryan Elvis Presley. But Houston says, oh, thank you very much. As they take game one, 6-2 final. Well, Elvis. Well, Elvis in the morning. Uh huh. Uh huh. Didn't you date a girl that also dated Elvis? I dated Elvis's ex, ex Elvis. 
Okay. 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 Elvis Andrews. Elvis Andrews. This game, uh, we were talking about this game together when we were doing whatever we were doing yesterday. One, Verlander guaranteed seven innings. That's pretty much what I said. You can, like, guarantee it. Seven innings, one hit, zero earned runs. Guy's a fucking insane beast. My favorite pitcher to watch still. He's insane. McKe- or uh, uh, Glass now was looking pretty good. Did you see the top of the first? The Astros came out swinging. Like, they put two hard-hit balls that were caught deep in the outfield, which is what I said that their strategy should be like. If you want to do something, you got to you gotta jump on McKay early. They almost got him. Glass now. Glass now. I'm going to keep mistaking them because I want to talk about McKay later. Gla- sure. Got to jump on Glass now early. But he, he, he was looking good, man. Then that Altuve home run, you have to be perfect. He gets pulled. It only goes four innings and a third. Um, which, uh, you know, with the Rays bullpen, it's not that crazy. Maybe that's all they needed. Or, you know what I mean? Like, they're they're fine. They're a team that's fine with a short leash, kind of like the Yankees. But that drop ball, it's a stark reminder. Oh, no. We're the Rays. They're the Astros. And we just gave them a favor. And I, I think I – I think, yeah, Jim, before this game, I, I think I said something verbatim like, the what to watch for is what's going to make the Rays crack. And when that pop-up dropped, it was over. Um I, I mean, the, the game ended right there. Um, and, yeah, Glass now, he looked really good. Altuve got him. It was a high fastball. Uh, <laughs> it's why Al- Altuve's a special dude. Nine, um, 98 and at his shoulders. Altuve cranks it to left field for the homer. He's uh, – if, if you're a young kid who's listening, <laughs> hey, uh, take all your family's phones and leave us a five-star review. And I send us a picture of their credit card too. No, don't do that last part. Just the just the reviews thing. Um, but when your coaches are telling you, like, hey, go up there wanting to swing, Jose Altuve is why. <laughs> yeah. Um, because you you can learn how to take pitches. You can't learn how to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean that that was the first crack. And then when that pop up dropped, I mean there there was no coming back. That's a real because they scored two later on. And I do think that's important for them. If if the Rays walked away from this game with no runs on the board, I think you're kind of doing a little aw shucks. And then if you don't score in the first couple innings against Garrett Cole, which you're probably not, you're going to be like, OK, are we just going to go scoreless this whole playoffs? But they got to Presley in the bullpen. And this is what I was kind of saying the other day. And I got a little kickback. But Presley hasn't been the guy who started off the year with 30 scoreless appearances or whatever. Um, so they they get to the bullpen a little bit. They get it. They see a couple runs get put on the board. I do think there is a slight piece of importance on that. Um, Garrett Cole and 14 strikeouts later, it might not matter, but that's that's for later. Why didn't the Rays use? Why'd they use McKay out of the pen? Like why isn't that dude like was his name Nick Anderson? Yeah, Where I mean they're he? all about matchups. Um so I mean what whatever they saw and I think he came in did Brantley get him? Or no, that's that's the whole pop up thing. Um yeah. I don't know, I was just like I was kinda why don't you use that guy who's fucking amazing? Yeah, and that's uh, you we as you said to start this and I, I texted you during the game. I said if if the Rays got through that fifth inning, which they clearly did not, um, that I thought it was a, it was basically a coin flip the rest of the way because you were going to get two more Verlanders and then the Houston pin versus that Rays bullpen that'll that'll match you up to death. Um, they couldn't get through, and I mean that was kind of it. Yeah. You want to share our thoughts on McKay because I think it's funny. Jake was so excited about Brandon McKay because he's a two-way player. He's a high prospect. You probably learned about him in your nerdy baseball game, Outside the Park Baseball. Is that what it's called? Yeah, and he was like a top pick in the draft. I'm usually pretty good with those guys too. But, yeah, I got excited. Louisville, I think he won the Golden Spikes. He could pitch. He could hit. And 
like with the Otani noise, it was like, all right, are we going to give this dude a chance? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and I'll, I'll preface this and I'll, I'll tee you up, Jim, but I, I love baseball. Obviously we have a lot of t-shirts saying that, um, baseball's fun. Um, and, and don't get that as like, oh, you don't have to be competitive because winning's fun. I, I think that's why people like to go play for the Patriots and, and where, wherever you go to win. Brandon McKay is having a bad time when he's on a baseball field. He just looks like a, a pouty boy. He looks so angry. It's like, dude, have fun out there, man. I think he's the most brooding man in baseball. He's like the Jon Snow of starting pitchers. It's like like Jon Snow was kind of just like sad and sometimes it was funny. <laughs> You're like, you do look sad, Jon Snow. McKay's so like pent up. It's like, dude, throw a curveball, strike someone out and smile. <laughs> it's funny because I, I was like, damn, this guy sucks. Presence on the mound alone. And yeah, I think if if you're if you don't fully understand what our, what we're saying, maybe listen to when we talk about Edwin Encarnacion later. We just watch a game with McKay on the mound and see how he's the most brooding man in baseball. Yeah, or that, or that. All right, next game was was next game Cardinals Braves, St. Louis Atlanta. All right, here we go. On your mark, get set, burn. Game two in the ATL as the Braves would turn to Mikey Foltinevich, hoping Fulty wouldn't be faulty verse. Oh, that's a bad man, Mommy. Jack Flash Flaherty, one of the more special second halves of a season you'll see from a pitcher as St. Louis tries to make it a 2-0 series lead. Let the rain fall down and wake my dreams. Josh Donaldson brings the rain with an RBI single in the first. They needed that. And then guess what, Jim? Fulty and Flash Bulls shoved. That JD RBI in the first was the only run until bottom seventh and what manager Brian Snicker called the old no yeah moment. Adam Duvall does it all. Two-run pinch hit homer hitting for Fulty. Wow, it's 3-0. Melanson would shut it down by only giving up two hits, no runs. Atlanta bravely bounces back to win game two and tie up the series. Ooh. I think we, we said, like, you got to get to uh, – if you want to get to – I say this about every rookie pitcher. If you want to get to Flaherty, you got to get to him in the first inning. It's your best so chance. Uh, glass now as well. They got one across, and that was good enough for a while. Um, they rode Flaherty into the seventh because, I don't know. It was a classic case of it was good enough for a while, but everyone in the building knew what happened yesterday and knew that one run was not going to be enough. Um, I mean, once they push it to three, it turns out they did shut him out. But if you saw Melanson in the last inning, um, one run wasn't going to do it. So, yeah, I guess that would be the conversation in St. Louis a little bit is – um, I wonder. I mean, see, I, I I had to flip over to Yankee stuff at this point, but I wonder who was warmed up, because once they pinch hit for the pitcher, obviously, like Fulty was shoving, so maybe they leave Fulty in with a one nothing lead because they want him to keep going, and the Braves bullpen is bad, so maybe if you're the Cardinals, you think, okay, well, you know, McCann got a single, he's not that fast, he's not going to score. On a double, even maybe there's two outs and the pitcher's up. So clearly, you leave him in if the pitcher comes up. Then they pinch hit Duvall for the pitcher. I think you can still, I think it's still fair to have confidence in Flaherty against Duvall. Duvall just came through. Yeah. I mean, Matt, if it was Joyce, maybe you say, okay, lefty and his splits. Uh, Jim, this is where baseball takes over and if you want to get mad at the managers you can but think about what I was just saying about the Braves bullpen they looked like the least uh one of the least reliable things in this playoff so they're pulling Fulty with a one nothing lead and Fulty just looked dominant he was awesome and if Duvall goes out there and then the bullpen blows it 
everyone's going to be all over Snicker saying, oh, sh- you should have just left Fulty in there, huh? It's it's kind of one of those do or dies. He didn't know Adam Duvall was going to hit a 423-foot homer off Jack Flaherty, but he did. It's 3 nothing, and he looks like a genius. Yeah. And the cards get shut out, so this series is now 1-1. One and one. So much for the fear of Flaherty. We didn't know that uh, Fulty was going to go off. Yeah, Fulty had been saving it, and I, again, I, I don't want to butcher the full story because I'm, I'm sure our Braves fans listening know it better than me, but I think he had some health stuff. He got sent down, um, and he just kind of wasn't right, and he started showing signs towards the end of the season. And this is this was huge for him because he's a guy that was supposed to be part of this Braves future going forward. He had a pretty atrocious year. And now he's kind of cemented. That's the guy they know and love in Atlanta. So good for him. And how about Freed coming out of the bullpen? Yeah, I mean, back-to-back games, right? Um, Two strikeouts again, one inning pitch, two strikeouts again. We're seeing a lot of this in the National League. Yeah, and it's going to be he's he's still lined up for game four. Uh, It'll be Soroka game three, Freed game four, unless something changes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what the Braves have to figure out the rest of the way is because, um, uh, Anibal Sanchez, they, they have him and w- how and where are they going to use him? Is he just their emergency guy? And if he's not your emergency guy, then is Julio Teheran, another name we slaughter Tehran. all the time, Tehran. Tehran, uh, is what, how are you going to use one of those guys? You have to use Hannibal or you have to use Julio Who's it going to be and where? I don't think on the roster. He got he replaced a uh, cold play guy. Oh, Martin? That's what I'm saying, yeah. So now that you have both of them, you need to figure out how and where you're going to use at least one of them. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we'll preview game three tomorrow of that yeah. series. Um, but that's fun. There's not going to be a sweep in the National League. And, and, and the other thing... The, the other big note about this game, Jimmy, I don't know if you saw this, but Akun, Ronnie hustled the whole game, as a normal baseball player would, and his quotes after were the quotes that they were looking for yesterday. He, like, apologized to little kids, and he's like, it's, that's never acceptable, and he said, I've done that twice this year, and it's never acceptable. So <laughs> just like that, I mean, look how the storyline of this series and everything that happened in game one has <laughs> fully changed. Yeah, well, I, I'm i sure that he got a hard talk to from someone in PR department or or hopefully he saw that his teammates were taking it serious. I'm like, nah, it's not cool. But, I mean, yeah. it's I don't want to do it again. It's not that big of an issue. Yeah, and the other thing that was missing that you, you did say yesterday, I mean, the stuff that kind of gets lost in translation, even the good quotes that came out after the game yesterday, they were still, like, just a little offbeat because there is a barrier. Yeah. I, yeah, it's funny. It's, I'm laughing because his translator, you'll love the way the Braves translator looks. So looks wacky. He looks like, like a music that. conductor for some Spanish orchestra. I think I have seen that guy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, like, translated him with, like, a stammer, which I don't know. Maybe the Yankees translator just cleans it up. But he, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was like, dude, come on. Fix it all. Come on, dude. Let's go to the next game, Jake, and this was ours. Yankees versus the Twinkies. Yankees. Same burn that you did on Talking Yanks, or did you do a new one? Uh, same burn. Let me let me make sure I've got it here. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to rewrite another one, so if this one has too much Yankee bias, I'm sorry, but noses your poses. On your mark. Get set. Burn! Game one of the ALDS is the Minnesota Twinkies were hosted by the 27-time world champion New York Yankees. How about some syrup on your pancakes on a nice autumnal day? James Paxton, the Big Maple versus Jose Twigs and Barrios as Minnesota tries to gather a win in the boogie down like pre-gaming when your buddies aren't home. How about a couple solo shots? Jorge Placido Polanco and Nelson cruises one out. A pair of runs for the Twins. Ha! Bottom three. Show me your bird. 
Edwin's back, RBI double. Baby, baby, glaby, oh. Two runs score with a little help from the air from CJ Crone. Three, two, Yanks. Minnesota would tie it up in the fifth, but they pulled a lead course, so not so fast, my friend. Happy College Football Saturday. You gotta see the baby. The Venezuelan victor, Gracias de Caracas. Two RBI double for the kid, Glaber Torres. 5-3 Yanks, but you so know the Twins aren't just going to roll over as Miguel goes yard, but at 5-4, the Bombers would open up the floodgates. A go DJ, and as a DJ, LeMayhew bomb, Red Solo Cup, hey, I'll fill you up, it's a guarded party, he goes solo job, a bomb from Brett Gardner, 7-4, then like punching your address into your Tesla, let the machine bring you home. La Machina, DJ LeMayhew, bases clearing double, another hit. The pitching goes Paxton to Vino to Canely to the Goose, to Chad Green to Britton to Happer, hello to Chappie. Pinstripes take game one, 10-4 final. It's a long one. I still like that long burn one. a lot. As a, Yankee a longer fan, one. as a Yankee fan, I got a lot of good stuff in there. Second time hearing it. A lot of good stuff. So, there's a lot of tidbits. Yeah, I don't normally do the pitchers at the end for the other burns, but uh, yeah, no, and I, I <laughs> had to clarify the goose being Chad Green. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is the goose. He is the goose, so, so now you know. So what are, what are, what are uh, national baseball fans or third-party fans need to know? Home run, two home run hitting teams. I think there was a yep. lot of home runs hit. There's four. Uh, yeah, Polanco, Cruz, Sano, well, LeMahieu, and Guardi. So there's five. Five home runs hit. Uh, All solo shots. The Yankees had guys on base every inning. I think every inning but yeah. one, they had guys on base. A lot of traffic. They scored ten runs. They left seven on base, uh, which is good. I mean, good for the Yankees. The, and the, uh, the, the Twins pitching... Is suspect. Um, yeah. And I know everyone likes to think that about the Yankees pitching. The Yankees bullpen's good. Paxton wasn't amazing in any in any regard. It wasn't anything you'd write home or show highlights of. But he gutted out four and two-thirds. Uh, all solo shots. Whatever. Berrios. Berrios, no one was fooled by his off speed the entire game. Like, they were just spitting on it the entire game. And Smoltz was like, he started it too low. It's obvious it's an off-speed pitch. So he struggled. The story is uh, the Yankees had eight walks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, the the whole Savages in the Box rant that, that my friend on the other end of the mic brought to the world. Um, they, they control the zone. It's been their motto all season since spring training. Um, eight walks. And there was only... Only one of the walks was a guy that came out of the Twins bullpen that was clearly overmatched in his first like playoff outing. Um, the rest of them were like good walks. Giancarlo Stanton was spitting on pitches. He had three walks. Um, Judge had some great at bats. Uh, for Yankee Land, the big takeaway is that there was a couple guys. Well, for me, there was a couple guys that were injured. Encarnacion, uh, Gary Sanchez, and. Giancarlo hasn't barely played this year. They all looked good slash healthy enough. <laughs> um, and for, for Giancarlo and Gary, I think it's a weird mix. Gary doesn't look right right now necessarily, but he still looks solid. Giancarlo looks locked in at the dish, but he's he's running at it like 75%. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. And I think this game... This game played out almost exactly how you and I thought it would. Like, yeah, there were some homers, um, and they kind of went shot for shot a little bit, but that Minnesota bullpen, and I'm sorry to all my Twins fans, but you're going to have to point out to me one guy that you should that Yankees hitters should be worried about. Yeah, that sounds harsh. Bruce Star Gratterall. He he looked fucking good. He's the guy. He was throwing. They need to up him up. I mean, do you think? Well, we'll see how many games they have, they play. But do you think like if the Twins were to make the ALCS, I think Gratterall's going to have to become a main cock. Like they're going to have to ride him. 
Yeah. Because because uh, no uh, one else puts fear into hitters at all. He's the only guy that's coming out of the pen with with special arm talent. Um, we uh we only saw one of the killer tees yesterday, as I I labeled them. I think Duffy. he was the I mean, only. T- he was the only Twins pitcher that didn't give up a run. Yeah, um, and Gratterall. Um, oh, but yeah, 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 so we we didn't necessarily see the Twins' best guys, and it, it did open up a little more. Kyle Gibson's had a horrible year. Stashik got knocked around. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe Taylor Rogers and Bruce Starr figures it out, and, and that changes the storyline. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Yankees kind of <laughs> Yankees the Twins last night. Hopefully it'll happen again tonight. We'll preview that in a little bit. But we got one more game to burn, and this one was a little bit of a doozy. The National League has been giving us good games. Jake, are you ready? I am ready. Take us to L.A. Eddie Bach. Is it? Steven A. Strasburg in the Nats trying to break serve versus the Dodgers and Clayton Bigsby Kershaw as they try not to crack in Hollywood. But top one, Howie Mandel Kendrick deals out an RBI single, one nothing Natitudes. Top two, the Nats are eaten as Adam hits an RBI single, followed by Carmelo Anthony Rendon shooting a deep contested two. His double scores eaten and it's 3 nothing Expos. Justin the Wildling Turner turns things north for the Dodgers with a sack fly in the sixth. Only run they'd get off Strasburg. Six innings pitch, 10 Ks dominant. But oh boy, here comes the Nats pen. Doolittle does just that as Max Muncy pimp jobs one. One run game as Drubal Cabrera with the big Geico insurance run. The Natitudes show fortitude as the score is four to two. But as the Joker said, you always need an ace in the hole. And out of the bullpen comes their defender of the night. Max Scherzer strikes out the side in the eighth, calling him Michael Orr for how he blindsided the Dodgers. Daniel Hudson does some yoga on the mound as he bends but doesn't break. Huge strikeout of Seager to end it. Nats head back to the Capitol happy. 4-2 win. Series tied. They had the Dodgers had the bases loaded in the ninth, ready to break it open, but Hudson came through and struck out Seager. Yeah, Corey Seager puts a ball in the gap that burns a lot different. Oh yeah, this was a good game, and Scherzer out of the pen's a fun storyline. Feel bad for Kershaw because did you like see? We were watching the Yankees game when this game started, but I went back and like it's pretty brutal, man. Like. Yeah, a hit by pitch in the first, a hit by pitch in the second, uh, and then kind of like the first inning is pretty sad because it's <laughs> double by Trey Turner. Then the first out you get, they gave you an out because they wanted to move him over. Then you hit, then you hit Soto. Kendrick gets a hit. Ryan Zimmerman pops out, and then Suzuki's out. There's like not impressive outs there. Yeah, it's I uh, I mean it's it's playoff Kershaw and it's a debate cuz he he ends up having a quality start but in the playoffs is it uh, especially when you when you give up the runs early like that and the Nats were 3 nothing and in control. Um uh, obviously the story would have changed if uh if if the Dodgers put up a 7 spot but they didn't cuz Strasburg's dirty. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this has kind of been like the story of playoff Kershaw. Like it's not bad, but it wasn't good enough. And that hit by pitch on Soto, you could see like his, you, you could almost see the demons come back into his body. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? I just hit him with that. Um, yeah. so that was, that was tough for them. Um, Strasburg, man, I, everyone's, I don't know if you've seen these stats circling yet, but Technically, in four games started, he has the lowest playoff oh, ERA don't. ever. Yeah. Don't. I can't believe you brought that up. I'm in on Strasburg, man. I like Strasburg. Don't give me in minimum four games. Who the fuck cares about that stat? Hey, I care for those four games, baby. That's Jakey's butter knives right there. They're stats. That's I all saw, they are. I saw you can't ML- let them hurt them. That's stupid. Minimum four games. Okay. Thanks for sharing. They're the stats. 
they're irrelevant. You think Dodgers fans are getting a little worried or bummed out about Bellinger? Doesn't have a hit yet. Um, interesting. Are they bummed out about Bellinger? I'd say no. Um, I mean, you saw it was Corbin game one. Corbin's got a wipeout slider. Um, when he when he figured it out, he he figured it out. Um, and Strasburg, I mean, like you just said, he's the best playoff starting pitcher ever. So. Um, I, I don't think you can necessarily hold Cody at bay. He needs to do something in Washington, though. He needs to get a hit. Someone in the chat said, I'm salty. Strasburg is amazing. I, I don't care about fucking Strasburg. It's just dumb to say four minimum four starts. Nothing against the, the player. It's the stat. Can you give me minimum one start? Let's celebrate that guy. Okay, yeah, best playoff start ever. I'd love to celebrate that guy. He deserves it. Don Larson. I think he's had more than that, though. No, we're just doing minimum one game. Right, but it's it's like career stats. What's that? You're, yeah, I mean, they're technically two different things, but I, I see what you're doing. Um, Bellinger needs to get a hit, a big hit. With how bad he was in the postseason last year, and he's hitless. Eight plate appearances, zero hits. He, he had I'm two telling you, walks yesterday. Um, I don't. I'm, he's the MVP. Jake currently has hitless, and he had the worst playoffs ever last year. I'm telling you, I think Dodgers fans are a bit on edge. Like they need a big I, hit. I, I think you're a little too far. I mean, yeah, they. You obviously want that out of that guy, but he got on base twice in the first game. He got walked, um, and then he uh, like like. You and the salty chat is telling you he faced the best playoff starter ever. So he's he needs he needs to do something in um, in D.C. for sure. His career postseason on base percentage is now two twenty seven. It's not good. Thirty three games. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, the other the other thing from this game, a the catch Rendon made in the ninth. Did you see that? Yeah, it was pretty nuts. I, that uh, <laughs> that could have also changed the burn significantly mm -hmm. if he doesn't catch that ball. Uh, and then this is just kind of a fun fact. Well, A, and I, I don't know if you want to dive into this a little bit, but Scherzer comes out of the pen. He strikes out the side in the eighth inning, and it was the first time a Nationals pitcher had struck out the side in the eighth inning since June when Max Scherzer did it in a game he started. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking crazy so that's that's pretty cool that's that's uh, jake you didn't actually research that that was on either after the game on tbs or one of them but still pretty crazy the, and the, dave roberts uh and again if this dodger ship starts going downhill fast disco dave's out of town he's straight up said he's like oh yeah we didn't think they'd use strasburg and it's like whoa man <laughs> i mean think about it for more than a second yeah, what what changes though? Like wh they would prep for Strasburg. I mean, you you maybe manage the game differently, Scherzer. thinking you you maybe manage the game a little more differently, thinking that instead of hey we're gonna have three innings at this terrible bullpen, instead of we're gonna have two innings at this terrible bullpen and one by arguably the best pitcher in baseball. We were a little su surprised they didn't just go Scherzer for two. They brought Hudson out and. We were a little close to being correct. Hudson loaded them up. And, again, the burn would be different. This whole podcast would be different if, if Corey Seager gets one, which he almost did. There's seven straight high, high and away fastballs that he had a chance to put the barrel on. Uh, Hudson does get him with a nice inside uh, back foot slider. But, yeah, and I, if you're going to use Scherzer there, which it, clearly they made a conscious decision before the game. It's not like, hey, Max, what do you <laughs> – you want to run out there, bud? Um, no, like they came into this knowing they were going to use Scherzer. And, man, if Hudson blew that game, a two-run game, and you did burn 14 bullets out of Scherzer, I mean, that would have been an awful look. Yeah, that's true. I would have used Scherzer for true. And, again, that's the whole <laughs> playoff managing. I mean, we would be killing, killing – the Nationals manager if Hudson got rocked, which he basically did, but he didn't. Yeah, yeah. 
Come on, Seager, change the storyline. No, I'm happy that it's a one-to-one series. Both National League series are good. I was watching MLB TV, and uh, who's the guy on MLB TV? Um, uh, I can't think of it. DeRosa? No, 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 no. Um, Howie. Oh, the, like, main broadcaster guy? No, and he's on the studio. I, I, it's such a popular name that I just... Reynolds? Harold Reynolds. Harold Reynolds. I don't know why gotcha. I was blanking on that. Harold Reynolds was talking about how, you know, um, these National League pitchers are just attacking, and they're just going right at batters, and they're doing really good. And, like, he wants to see that in the American League. And I'm like, like dude, look at the Astros... Yankees yeah. and Twins lineups in comparison to the Braves, Nationals, and uh, the Dodgers have a good lineup, but the Braves, Nationals, and Cardinals. Like, there's clear holes plus a pitcher hitting that allows you to just attack. It's such a different yeah. animal with the Astros, uh, Astros, Yankees, and Twins who have legit, like, mashers up and down. Yeah, and I mean, uh, and, and it sample size too. Again, Strasburg, <laughs> you could watch Jimmy and I dance around, dance around it all day. He's really good. <laughs> that's that's the consensus. Um, he has ten strikeouts. The Dodgers, as a team, have seventeen strikeouts, but uh, thirteen of those came from Strasburg and Scherzer, <laughs> two of, two of the best starting pitchers, and then the other ones came from who are supposed to be the back end of their bullpen. Uh, so that's a little different. And then we touched upon it with the Twins. The Twins clearly came in yesterday like, let's get ahead, which they did a lot, but they weren't going to give the Yankees anything. They wanted the Yankees to get themselves out, and they refused. Eight walks. It, it was not necessarily the prettiest baseball, but if you like a good at bat, the Yankees were just saying no. If, if you're going to be off the plate or in the dirt, we're not offering. And I, I think that's – we'll – Maybe this is the segue, but in in today's Yankees Twins game, that's the number one what to watch for. For anyone watching behind the scenes, we have an ad agency that sometimes put ads in for us. Anyway, all right. Let's preview these games coming up, which you segue us into. We have the two American League series. The first game of the night is the Yankees at the Twins. Yankees have Tanaka going, who we have blind faith in in the postseason. He's been nothing. Yeah, do we have to preface this whole thing? <laughs> no, I'll tone it down. We have okay. blind faith in Tanaka. He, he's Does he have rough games? Like Sometimes he's a bit of a coin flip, sure. He's always brought it in the postseason, so hopefully he does again for me as a Yankees fan. The Twins apparently had Oda Rizzi warming up and then scratched him, put him on game three, and have Dobnak pitching game two. Randy Dobnak, as a cool story, started the season in single A, was an Uber driver in the offseason, but that's kind of getting blown out of proportion because a lot of minor leaguers have other jobs yeah. in the offseason. Like, a lot. Our good best friend, Tim Melville, works at a barbecue place in the offseason. Yeah. So I'm kind of sick of people acting like that's so crazy. Like, yeah, he got a part-time job because minor league baseball players get paid dirt. Pretty normal. Uh, but he's only started five games this season. He's appeared in maybe ten. He hasn't really faced any good lineups. His starts were against no playoff teams, right? Yeah, he only had one appearance against the playoff team. It was one inning against the Nats, and they did score a run. I mean, I'm not going to deep dive into that. It's um, They're taking a chance. Randy Dobnak has pitched really well for them. Um, I think his ERA is at 159 or something like that. Good for uh, you, Randy Dobnak. Listen, I said I'd yeah. tone it down a little bit, but I've been saying this. I've been saying this all season. All of the Twins' good stats are bullshit. Yeah, Randy Dobnik looked really good against the Royals and the Tigers in late September. Yeah. What, what's the judge there? What's What are we judging? 
Don't tell me Randy Dobnak looked really good in September. He literally faced teams that were already bad that have zero interest in playing baseball. So we will see. But it's kind of like how all the Twins numbers, you kind of have to like really peel in and like, wait, hold on. This isn't as impressive as it seems. Played a lot of bad teams. And yeah, the, the Odorizzi thing is interesting. And Jim, I, I personally like the move because, and and again, tweet at me, talking Jake, if you think this is too Yankee land. But think about the names I'm about to say. Jake Odorizzi, who's been around the league and done it for a while. In the AL East for a little while, nonetheless. Um, Randy Dobnak, we already covered that. Uh, rookie who's going to be on the mound at Yankee Stadium today against one of the better lineups you'll ever see on a baseball field. Um, I like it because I think if you're the twins, you're trying to think of how to win baseball games. Hot take Jake. Here I am again. Um, and what are we working on today, folks? Well, Rocco today, the meeting is how are we going to win the next game? How are we going to win? And I, I think if you, if you laid out the remaining options for Minnesota, it's okay. Are we going to try to put something together at home? The stadium will be rocking in Minnesota. Target Field, baby. And we're going Randy Dobnak to the pen and we'll figure it out. Or is your best chance, hey, we'll throw Dobnak and a bunch of different guys at you and maybe the hitting goes off and maybe the pitching figures something out. And if it doesn't, we lose, which bias, bias podcast right now. But Oda Rizzi at home in game three gives them their best chance to win a game. So I like that for them. Okay, cool. Uh, the lineup should be about the same for both teams, I believe, right? There's not a lot of splits going on. A lot of Some Yankee fans think Didi might be out and Voight might be in. I think they roll back the same lineup. Yeah, I think the Yankees after the win are going to roll back the same lineup. And Masahiro Tanaka, we said blind confidence before. Um, he does have 30 playoff innings to the tune of a 1-5 ERA. That's the reason why we have blind confidence in him. Uh, for the Twins, Jim, you might see a little bit of platoon stuff. Um, uh, the one that's going to be interesting, and I'm sure is a conversation, is Mitch Garver, who's had such a great year and was batting leadoff yesterday. They also have Jason Castro, who came back down to earth a little bit, but he is a lefty bat, so do they throw him in um, versus Tanaka? Um, I, I think that's really the only conversation because um, uh, the the lineup didn't fully do their job. It, it was all solo homers. But, I mean, the, the Twins bats are there. If, if, if there's runners on base, you need to be worried about these Twins. Yeah, I was trying to find something. Randy Dobnak, Jake? Yes. Um, the other thing, so, like, I'm too confident and it's gonna, it might come crashing down on me. Or it may not. Sure. That's the gamble of life. He pitches to contact. Right. Against the Yankees. Yeah. In the postseason. Pitching the contact to the Royals in September might work out. You can hey, see maybe, how maybe. scared of contact the Twins were yesterday. Eight walks. So we'll see. Maybe we'll be punching ourselves in the faces and it'll be frustrating as all hell. And you know how impactful a double play ball is in the playoffs. Um, and I, I think the only other thing for the Twins is maybe they try to get Jonathan Scope in the lineup somewhere because he's, he's a righty. Um, or, excuse me, no, they won't try to get Scope in there. I was thinking about yesterday's game. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Randy Dobnak, prove us, you're going to have to prove us wrong, dude. <laughs> Oh, it'd be a big time hero. It'd be a big story. So I don't yeah. I don't think I don't think we're that out of line with this because if Randy Dobnak deals against the Yankees for even five innings of like one hit ball, that's a huge story. Like that's gonna be like Randy Dobnak came out of nowhere and beat the Yankees. Like, you know what I mean? Well, no, I think that would be the counter. I think if our twins fans are listening, they'd say, Hey, Dobnak was good, man. He's got really good numbers. We're expecting him to be good today. Yeah, but they yeah. And then if he was, they'd say, hey, you guys, you guys, Yankee fan jerks. Randy Dobnak's a stud. I've been on, I've been hard on the Twins way before I knew we were going to play one. in the postseason. Day one. Beat good teams, and I won't be hard at you. They there had, you for anyone that's listening for the first time, Twins had the most amount of games against teams under 500 
they had the least amount of games against teams over 500, and they had a losing record to the teams that were over 500, and their only team in the playoffs to have a losing record against teams over 500 because they play in the worst division in all of baseball. Yeah. Three teams actively trying to not win games. So that's my day one stance has been this Twins team is going to need to prove me wrong. And I didn't know they were going to be playing the Yankees. So, yeah, it's not a Yankee thing. No, and uh, t- today's a big game for them because the, another thing that they, they did have that was a good stat for the Minnesota Twins was they had the best road record in baseball, which is impressive, however you want to dice it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even if a, no, lot of those, if a lot of those games are White Sox, <laughs> Royals, uh, Tigers. Tigers, it does make it easier. But uh, an impressive road record is an impressive road record. But game two at the Bronx Zoo today, Dobnak, um, I don't know. Sur- all right. Surprise me, twins, but like totally don't at all because I'll kill you. In the other game, Astros versus Rays, we got Blake Snell versus Garrett Cole. Hey, here's Verlander, seven innings, one hit. Now enjoy Cole. Honestly, and not to be shots fired at Garrett Cole, but it's it's still better than Verlander. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, you got to take... Yes, I agree. <laughs> you know, um, Garrett Cole, his postseason, uh, he's got pretty good postseason stats, a three seven two ERA, 29 innings. So he's been there. Um, Boston got to him year, last year. Yeah, last year Boston got to him. Um, C- Cleveland put up one run, uh, which would, hey, be better than Verlander. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you're Tampa. I, I think Kevin Cash actually handled it well. He said, hey, we got Verlandered. Um, it it is what it is, uh. Yeah, you just you got to put together some at bats, and again, you have that belief from yesterday that if you get a chance again, if you're in the game versus Houston's bullpen, that's a basically as much as you can ask for for Tampa, and uh, go do it right. Yeah, Snell hasn't looked that good since coming back from injury, and he's never made it out of the third inning in two games where he threw. 50 pitches and then 62 pitches so that could have got him if he was pitching well but i mean in his last game jake he gave in 2.1 innings so that's seven outs before he got seven outs he allowed three hits and two walks so before he got seven outs he put five people on base in the game before that he only went one and two thirds so that's five outs before he got five outs, he put five people on base, two hits and three walks. So it's been a tough last two. He's going to have to, like, step up and bring it. Snell, at his best, is really, really good. But I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Houston jumps him. Yeah, they, they've they got so many good tough righty bats. Um and th- they might only ask Snell to get through the lineup once, depending what that pitch count looks like. They, they're they hoping that he would get through clean twice. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they kick it. Um, like, if, is Torino's on the playoff roster? Because he's a righty and he's a guy that can frustrate you. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't want to – this this sounds like such bad <laughs> sports radio. I don't want to say I'm calling out Blake Snell, but I'm calling out Blake Snell. Um you know, you were the Cy Young winner. You had a bad year. You could cover up a lot of that. And there was injuries. You could cover up a lot of that with one good start today. Um, and he's he's got all the talent in the world. I'm, and maybe it's just Yankees bias because uh, the Astros are a, a fucking force. But I, I'd love to see Snell show something today. Yeah. They got Chirinos, Castillo, and Nick Anderson are their, like, big righties. Well, then uh, Emilio Pagan at the end. Chaz Rowe they used yesterday. I think Drake they used yesterday. So maybe they were saving Chirinos and Anderson for today. I have no idea. And yeah, Chirinos, man, he's a guy that just frustrates you because it's good stuff. It's not necessarily strikeout stuff, but it's good stuff. That would be interesting if Snell could go clean and they kick it to Chirinos. Or, I mean, if Snell can get four, I mean, you're into the actual dudes in that Rays bullpen. So... I mean, that's that's what that whole series breaks down to. That's what that whole series breaks down to. Boing. 
I think we're good. I think we've covered oh, yeah. our bases, right? We're good. Four Mitch, games. Maybe Mitch a longer episode than we wanted because it's four damn games. But we have four again on Monday. But first, two on Saturday, both ALs, two on Sunday. We will be back each day to recap what happened and preview what's coming up. We thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. If you'd like to leave a review, or if you'd like to subscribe, if you'd like to do all that shit, that would be kind of you. It would be very nice. Thanks. Enjoy your weekend.